Hello, we are going to start in two minutes. If you have time, you could first download the data we need today. There are only two FIF file with link provided. So you could scroll down uh, along week three fiber tracking page. Um, there are two files that, that we will use today for the hands-on part. So we could spend some time downloading before we get started. And if you, if you have a question, feel free to uh, type but in the chat and I would quickly check whether there are questions and then answer accordingly. So let's get started. Um, the first part of the course today, we are going to review um, next week's material and assignments. So the three major points, commercial pathway, association pathway, and projection pathway. So a quick way or easy way to memorize it is uh, those pathway roughly align with three different S's. The X axis connect left and right, which is the commercial pathway. And the Y axis going anterior posterior, that's the association pathway, even though some pathway may be curving around like arterial fasciculus, like cingulum. And then the Z axis goes up and down, literally those pathway serve like an input output from the cortex to subcortical regions or down to the spinal cord. So that's an easy way to um, get a rough idea of all most of the white matter pathway and their uh, category. And of course, their functions are all also related to their connecting regions. So let's have a quick check of the next week's assignment. So next week, we are, the assignment parts um, is about doing the manual segmentation of the three different pathway. So just like a quick five minutes, hopefully within five minutes and then see where I can do it. So open the fifth file, just download the fifth file here. So the fifth file here allow you to do the tracking. The first thing you need to do is to get a whole bunch tracking by clicking the fiber tracking button here. And depending on the, the setting you have, let me re restore all the default setting. Let's do it again. The default setting is that you just get the 5,000 tracks. But if you have followed the instruction to experiment all different parameters, you could find that you will, you here you can say, I want to have more seedings to get more tracks. Usually for manual segmentation, you need a large number of tracks to get enough coverage. So here you can see that right now we get almost like a several millions of tracks. And of course, if you get a lot of track here, it depends on your compute, computer resource. Uh, make sure that you may need to turn off uh, some of the rendering options here. You can see I use low quality, so it would be faster when I work out man manual segmentation. And also another trick is that instead of using the tube visualization, you can switch to line. So this is just some tip to save you time in rendering. So the first track, Oh, the assignment is arcuate fasciculus. So arcuate fasciculus go from frontal to temporal. So easy way to do it is like make a selection, click control S or command S, draw a line here. I said the track that goes anterior and the track that goes down. And then I go from the upper view, remove the tracks from this plan and then select the left part. Then I use a pruning, which is have a shortcut of command or control T, and then press on the bit. So 
So I just repeat doing this. So this one is the accurate fasciculus. Um, most of the, maybe some of it's not that good. You can find them in there. Maybe there's not all of it, but it's just a quick way of doing it. And then the second pathway is cingulum. So cingulum goes in the medial part. And one key fact of cingulum is uh, it's a complicated pathway, but here I just want to map the one that goes connects frontal, medial frontal, and the parietal. So the way to do it is, let's just set that here. It's go like a C shape in the medial part. Let's be doing this and going this orientation. So the trick here is I need to set that a track in different orientation combined with priming. And then remove some of the tracks that's not singular. So you see here is most of the singular bundle. Some even goes to the parahippocampal regions. Uh, some will go from uh, to the front, but most of them connect frontal to parietal. So this one's a cingulum. The third one is unsnet. So unsnet is a small C-shaped pathway going from the prefrontal to the anterior temporal. So C-shape is from here to here. I just said that it's mid-session. I'm doing, doing it repeatedly. So here I just want to get the left side, for example. Remove the those in the back, grooming. Let's give us a quick unseen it. Final one, cortospinal track. So common strata key here is for most of the projection pathway, they kind of forming like a very compact bundle. So the here, the motor pathway going to the front. So I can see the chart is how to draw the line. It, the line here is I you better to set it a track that go like for example here. I press con the shortcut Control S, press some the left mouse button, drag it, and release it. So then I'll set that the tracks here. Repeated doing it. Remove using Control D, Control T priming. Some of them are false tracks. So we see here how false tracks coming out. That's one of the topic today. And here I can remove it. So the trick here is I want, I want, if I want to just remove those greenish without touching those blue, I would use right mouse button to set that or delete. And here's a studio will consider the incoming direction. So here I can just do this without hurting those or removing those, those tracks. Doing this, just another bit. For example, I want if I want to remove those tracks that are going maybe deviating away, I just use right mouse click, and you will consider like an incoming angle, and then set that those with a larger angle interception. And this, so this is not part of it, and also. One way to check the accuracy is I always refer to the structural so I can insert the T1 using a button here or use, use slides, insert other image and see if it goes matching to the anatomy location. So for example, coital spinal tract, we well, need to check whether it goes to the anterior pons where sensory it goes into the posterior. So start so that's kind of that routine work here uh, done by the uh, tractography people here in the neurosurgery when they have like a pre-surgical planning. They do this all the day. So I spent eight minutes, it's a little bit longer. The last one is suspending. Um, it's very easy to do, it's just use control P instead of selecting now gives us to append those different passwords and you just do it, create those pictures. Okay, so let's 
back to the fiber tracking topic today. And hopefully you go through some of the video. If not, that you can spend some time watching those video that for the before the practicum material to help you understand all the things. So next 15 minutes, I will uh, I would like to introduce fiber tracking. So fiber tracking has been around for almost like 20 years. The first fiber Photography is by Besser or all the pioneers. Uh, here's a reference. Uh, you can interested in take a look of it. But the idea is very straightforward. So for example, we can open the hand the first hand hands-on file or any kind of fifth file you have. If you check out this interface. There is one key information provided by this fifth file is for each voxel, there is a fiber orientation derived either from DTI or different methods. There could be one fiber orientation or two. So if you really do not mean, you will see it provides a 3D orientation, but it's piecewise. So for each voxel, there's like an orientation point somewhere. And here, just visually looking at it, you could have a visual crude of the fiber that's going from here to here in the, in the Cope's closet. So we have to annotate it here. Say, for example, if I want to track a pathway, what fiber tracking is doing is I say, start it from a location, maybe here, and then keep moving along one direction just following, following, following until it reaches an end or either there's like, for example, here it's like, well, there seems to be no continuation because it's like a big turning angle and it stop here. And then on the other directions, keep going. So right now we're just like driving on a highway, keep going, keep going, following those trajectory until it reaches the end. So what I just did here is more kind of manual simulation of what fiber tracking is doing. So let me do it again. Say, for example, if I just pick a pathway, start it maybe here. In one direction, keep going, just following. So there's like a recursive iterative steps that keep moving, which we call propagating or propagation. And then once reach the end, do it again, but at different orientation. Just so it's like moving, changing direction, moving, changing direction, moving, and changing the direction. So it's like a stepwise recursive steps until you reach the criteria to say, well, stop here. Maybe like this one. So this really is what fiber tracking is doing. There's no metric tricks. I've been around for 20 years doing similarly. But here's the two information that's needed for this algorithm. First of all, the fiber orientation need to be telling um, the orientation or the fiber track. And the second is when we should stop here. So one of the most commonly used criteria is the anisotropy. So in the background is the anisotropy map. Here we use GQI, so it's a quantitative anisotropy. If we are using BTI, then that would be FA. Also, there is another commonly used combination criteria. Say if I just keep moving, keep moving, and then reach somewhere, well, this seems not a continuous pathway. For example, here is another pathway here. Then there will be a sharp, term, sharp turning angle that may be more than 45 degrees, and the algorithm will terminate here. Then this termination criteria is like the angular angular threshold. So for fiber tracking, there's usually two commonly used threshold to be used to determine when we should stop. One is the anisotropy value. Another is the turning angle. So if you check on the right hand side, options menu, expand the tracking parameter menu. The first one is about the tracking threshold, which is the angular threshold. And if you increase the value, you could see how DSS Studio tell you, well, here's the coverage and this fiber tracking will stop there. And we, if you put it zero, it doesn't really mean zero. 
it means that there's a studio will choose an optimal range of value. And then you will be like randomly set that between a range of threshold. For details, you can check out the documentation of the DSS Studio website. For the angular threshold, and that's the turning angle, which I just mentioned. Zero doesn't mean it's zero. It means that a random sampling between a low value, like 15 degrees to 75 degrees angle. Um, of course, you can say, well, if the track I know is like not making a lot of turning, then you could say, well, it's limited to 30 degree. Or if you track a large turning uh, fiber bundle, then maybe you lessen it to the 75 degree. The next one, the step size. As I mentioned, this is the fiber tracking is a recursive step started from a location which we call a ceiling point, and we propagate a distance and then make an adjustment of the orientation and then propagate another step. So it's like a stepwise recursive um, process until we reach the end. And that distance we, we make the step is called a step size. Um, usually this will be really similar to the spatial resolution. So if you have a one millimeter um, DWR data set, usually we will have step size at 0.5 millimeter or up to one. Followed by those parameters, the minimum length. So this serves like a filter. We could remove some smaller tracks by say, okay, the minimum length of the results should be more than 30 millimeter. And there's also the uh, maximum length. Next one is I determine how many seeds or tracks we want to have. So for example, I want to say, okay, for the fiber tracking result, I was just going to get a total of 1000 tracks. And you can see here fiber tracking, in fact, plays 2000 uh, for 2000 seeds, but only get 1000 tracks. The reason of some tracks being eliminated are due to minimum length threshold or maximum length threshold. So those numbers may not match. And here you could say, well, instead of setting the goal for the track, I, I was setting a goal for the seeds. So for here, I just I would like to get total number of seeds. And then here's the resulting track. So essentially those are the details about the fiber tracking algorithm. And there is another set of fiber tracking algorithm called probabilistic fiber tracking. For example, in FSL, there's a, met, uh, a routine called Project S. And the difference only within how we propagate or how we choose a parameter. For example, in FSL's Pro Project X, when you make a directions, there will be a distribution instead of a fixed direction. So for example, you see here, every time if I started at the same location, the numerical process will generate identical results if you started at the same seeding point. But for probabilistic fiber tracking, it may not because like every time you make a propagation, the fiber orientation may be sampled from a distribution. So even though if you started from the same location, probabilistic fiber tracking may give you different results. So I would say it's not like which one is superior. Um, it's more like they have different purpose and also application. So as we showing here, those are the, the information input. For fiber tracking algorithm, they inputted two key components. One is the local fiber orientation. Another one is the termination matrix, like the anisotropy map. And the output is, of course, the 3D coordinates from one, to, from one point to another point. And the methods, even with probabilistic fiber tracking or either it's deterministic fiber tracking all follow the same framework is a kind of an order method where you have the derivative and you want to get the full trajectory. Um, both deterministic or probabilistic fiber tracking follow the same approach. Still, other, there are also other fiber tracking algorithms like global fiber tracking, but we are not covering this today. So the hands-on session, that's experience some part of it. Say, for example, we just click on the fiber tracking and get the results. 
So in the GUI, it's very simple, click on it and you get a result. And then the question is, how could we get this on command line? So to get it on command line, I just show you an example here. And the last part of it is just to output the log output the, or just into a file. You can ignore this or just not including this because it's not part of it that will be sent to into DSS Studio. So for getting the similar result, you could input this, provided that the action code is TRK, stands for fiber tracking. And the source is for the fifth file. And here you can see I can supply a wildcard. So it would find all the fifth file within the folder. And then something interesting coming up, which we call the parameter ID. So in the past, we used to have, let's say, all the parameter I have to input, what would they what be the tracking threshold, angular threshold, all the parameter in. It is sometimes very really cumbersome. But if you do it in the GUI on the right lower corner, you see there's a report, and then they give you a parameter ID. So this parameter ID allows you to replicate exactly the same results by supplying it here. So for example, I can just copy this. Here I just copy the action part, source, and parameter. And what I can do is you go to the DSS Studio main interface. Remember, first week we mentioned the console mode. The console mode provides the internal message trend that allow you to monitor the process. And the button here allow you to, in, to initiate command line. So here you can just provide the action source and parameter. Make sure not to include the, the, the output redirecting command and then just click execute. So you see here, the command line goes to all the things. It takes all the parameter we just used. So here the parameter ID, setting up all the things, and it gets 5,000 tracks and save it to a file. So we can see, check the results. So that's the one we just got from command line. So let me do it again. So for example, if I just want to change some parameter here, and I can run the fiber tracking first in GUI. And then there would be a parameter ID that I can copy. And change it here. Okay, I'm wrong again. So you see here, it says there are 47,000 each tracks generated, and you'll be identical to the track we get from the GUI. So both go to the same pipeline to make sure that all the results are consistent. So you can test whether you can get the same results in the console or from the GUI. And of course, you can write a script to repeat all the results and then give um, apply to all the subject data you have. In the next 15 minutes, I'm going to talk about the errors in fiber tracking. Um, here, I just want to show you what is an example of a good tractography and the example of bad uh, tractography. And here, just show the picture on the left hand side and right hand side, they are actually from the same data set. But the left hand set, left um, picture is from some incorrect processing that end up with some um, bizarre looking of fiber tracks. You will see a lot of noisy tracks out. A key here to tell the difference is that you could see gyro folding on the right. So you see here, I can even till here, maybe the central sulcus. And there are also fissures separating parietal and occipital here. Superior frontal gyrus here. So a good tractography 
allows you to tell where are those anatomical landmark is, driver Salkai should be clear enough. So this one is a good quality and that hand size is not so good. You, you cannot even tell where the tracks terminated, where the are the central sulcus. So if you generate a tracks that the one in the left, there are some issues you need to handle, uh, either quality issue or the data is just not good enough. And then the key here is that once you get familiar with what good stratigraphy is, you, you would also need to refer it or like check out some um, dissection material. For example, here, um, a paper we did here at, in uh, UPMC 10 years ago, we are already able to get very close result between dissection and a good stratigraphy. So here's some gyro folding, almost consistent. You could see those practical occipital features clearly here. And the link provided, there are some anatomical dissection pictures within and comparison with uh, tractography results. So one key point things we need to learn from the workshop is need to tell whether it's good or not. Um, if we cannot tell whether the tractography is good or not, then there's no, that we cannot even able to figure out a problem. And if we do look at the arrows here, of course, from this left and right, most of the arrow in the left, it appear on the surface. Um, that's a major arrow coming source, um, especially when you see some noisy fiber near the brain surface. Usually that could be due to poor SNR or processing. Um, a lot of method they may be doing good in a cold white matter, but when that signals, when the MR scan, um, getting data from DWI, most of the DWI signal coming from, from white matter regions. So as the, as the tracks reach into the gray matter, usually those location has a low SNR and the low SNR give a lot of challenge to many diffusion models. So for example, some methods may be still doing good in the uh, deep white matter, but as it reaches to the cortical regions, some artifact or bias, signal bias coming out, um, that's either due to uh, SNR or acquisition are good enough, or either the diffusion model is not robust enough. So we only work with good signal. When it reaches the low SNR, it's just not doing good. So that's one of the quick identification of the error. Still, there's another error in that happens in deep white matter. That means even though if your SNR is perfect, your acquisition is absolutely correct, there are still errors that could happen. And here's just this some of an example. For example, mapping of the ceramic radiation, the track fiber tracking, force the make a um, arrow turning or contact con connection between two ceramic radiation. And the neural anatomy evidence will, sh will show that those tracks should be just coming out from sediments without forming this like a big U shape here. Similarly here, the second example here is the four next. So this bundle is real. And then there's another part that's called anterior ceramic radiation. This part of the bundle is real, but fiber tracking would make, make a four, false connection here, kind of grueling these two unrelated, unrelated track all together just because they, they go side by side in certain region, more like a leaking of the pipe or something. And this result is not correct, even though part of it are still true. Similarly, there are also a lot of different results. As you can see, the most commonly seen arrow here, even if the SNR or the data is perfect, is a like fiber tracking algorithm because like, you need to build the inference across, across different voxels. A lot of time, if two bundles go side by side, then you would tend to um, make a false turning or false continuation or false routing and creating some interesting bizarre bundle that does not exist in neural anatomy. And that's why in the in the second weeks of the, the course, we need to talk about what the true or the current anatomy is so that we can easily identify that.
I see a question that whether we have to do AD correction for every sample. Well, next week uh, I will talk more about it, but the quick answer is yes. Um, the reason is more like um, if you want to have a publication and don't have AD current, a lot of time reviewer will give you a hard time, and you you would. And the worst case scenario is that you have to redo all the analysis from button up. That, that's the things we don't want to see that happen. So the answer is yes, if possible, you need to have it. Still, there's a one part of the arrow that this we call the bi gyro bias. So here is a, if you zoom into some gyro folding, for example, here. If you look at the fiber tracking results, you will see all, most of the fibers just go into the tip of the drivers exclusively. So he, you see here, all the fibers are bluish because those are pointing to the top. But his taught us to tell us that like, those fibers would make a sharp turning when they reach the, reaches the gray, gray white metal junction. So the, this is correct anatomy just like we show in the microscopy. But fiber tracking, as we see here, when fiber tracking make a propagation, you always move forward. You won't just make a big turning. So if we have limited resolution, so here one voxel may be a huge gap covering all the gyros. If we don't have enough resolution, of course, all the track will just turning, only connecting to the tip as a fiber tracking results. Unless we have enough resolution to resolve this part of the track. Um, so this bias is, we call it gyro bias because most of the fiber tracking is our tend to make a uh, strict connection to the tip unless there's enough resolution or either the tracking algorithm have a modification to focus on turning when it reaches this region. So I just covered most of the error here. In essence, there are two categories. One is the error that could be corrected by getting better precision of processing. Usually those errors appears near brain surfaces. Um, a good example is like the picture showing here. Usually if you see this kind of picture, a lot of error for fiber appear on the surface, either there are a precision problem or a modeling problem. A second type of error is um, those due to fiber tracking algorithm itself, even if you have perfect data, after correct data, it still happens. That the reason is like the fiber tracking algorithm cannot tell whether the two fibers are related to each other. They just like follow the fiber orientation and sometimes it will make a false routing. And to handle those problems, either we need to have an even higher resolution. So in higher resolution, those fibers could be separated. So we see that, well, they are two fibers, not just one. Or either we use a prior information from an address. Say, for example, we have anatomy telling us, well, this doesn't exist, this doesn't exist. Then there's a way we could just eliminate those false fibers. So solution provide here, solution provides here. So the next half of the course is about region-based fiber tracking. And if you have a question, feel free to post on the chat. I see a question about what does better special mean for diffusion, higher p-value. So there are two different factors in DWL. One is special resolution. One is angular resolution. Those two are independent parameter. Higher spatial resolution means that your vessel size is much smaller. It gives you a better chance to, to separate bundles apart. Of course, if you have very like uh, low resolution, like three millimeter voxels, you, each voxel may include a lot of different fiber bundle all together within the voxel. And that greatly increases the chance you have a false routing. So spatial resolution, of course, is one key. And the second, we call it uh, angular resolution, usually it needs a high B value. We will talk about this in the next week and why we need high B value because if there are two fibers within the same bustle, they, they, are not, they are not overlapping together, they may be like intersecting, then that's the case we need higher B value. 
and high angular resolution to it too. Is your question about coming a bit on tracking with patients such as brains with tumor and lesions? So for, for tumor and lesions, we, um, what we did here at UPMC is like, um, most of the time may, we need a method that's robust to edema. Edema causes a lot of problem in DTI. Um, with, and we need a good modeling method that can handle pathological conditions. I will come up more um, probably in the next week because it's, this is more related to the modeling problem. Uh, in terms of geometry or tracking practice, it's almost identical. Um, of course, for larger tumor, it's much more challenging. So, uh, but of course, first we need to know how to segment fiber tracking healthy subjects. Once we feel confident doing that, then we can uh, easily apply it to patients. And of course, with the existence of the agents. Next one, how can we increase the resolutions in DSS Studio or we have to take care of doing acquisition? Yes, take care of doing acquisition. So let's continue with region-based fiber tracking. So region-based fiber tracking is like um, almost around at the same time when at the birth of fiber tracking algorithm, say for example, want to map a fiber pathway and we don't want to use manual segmentation if you have a thousand subjects data, um, then it's not, it, it isn't almost impossible to do it manually. So that's why we need automatic fiber tracking or region based fiber tracking. There are two files we need to hear. The first one, we use the template space fit file, ICBM 150 to two millimeters. Just that you know, this fit file is average from a thousand subjects. So ideally, it will be the ideal acquisition condition that give you very good SNR, even though some of the visual difference being eliminated. So let me open the file here. You can click on step G3. It's open. The file name will be called HCP1065 because average from a thousand and sixty five subjects. I see a question, say, got mosaic DTI. Is it enough to do DTI on this? Yes. So here, the first step is like, the example we are going to work out here is mapping the connection between left and right V1 using our eye. So the first step is assigning regions from others. So before I doing this, there are several different type of regions. RI is a region that filter tracks in. So tracks passing through the RI will be filtering in. Otherwise, those that are not passing the RI will be eliminated. You could have one RI or two RIs. Two RIs means that the tracks has to, to pass both. Otherwise, it will be eliminated. RI acting in the opposite way, it will filter try to go in. C regions design the starting location for fiber tracking. And one key point about the seeding region is like most of the seeding region should be starting within the deep Y meter instead of starting from the cortical region. Uh, obvious the reason is like it's more reliable to start it at a location where SNR is much better, which is the deep one meter. You don't want to start fiber tracking at the cortical regions because most of the time there will be noise or SNR. If you start at a location that's not having good quality, usually lead to um, worse results. The end regions is a more restricted form of ROI. So it requires not just passing, it requires a track to and within that location. Not N is the opposite of N. Terminative regions would serve in more like a cutting when the tracks reaching it. So the difference between RA and terminative is RA is like if a track reaching within this region, you will be totally eliminated. You will not show up in the fiber tracking results. But terminative region, it's just like a serving like a uh, in 
um, cutting locations where if the track uh, touching those locations, you'll be eliminated. Um, you will be cutting at that location, so it's not eliminated. So let's experiment or like get some hands on on how we are going to do. So the purpose here, example here, we want to map the V1 between left and right cortical region. So instead of drawing that, we could get it from the address. Click on the address button. Let's choose the SCP MMP or the quick way, click on the button on the search line, type V1. So let V1 from SCP MMP, click on it, edit to the here. Doing it the same, but set that the right at the here. So you could either looking it up in this list, left and right V1, or just type in the here, type, just type V1, you will see all the V1. It, some may be coming from different atlas, and here we just, we would like to use SPMMP. So once ready, you could visualize the track, uh, the region, right V1 and left V1. When those regions loaded in, it won't be assigned as a region type. So if you create fiber tracking now, it would just give you hope and track. So before I initiate fiber tracking, restore tracking setting, restore rendering setting, switch both to our eye. So that means what DSS Studio was doing here is seeding the whole brain and the result will be filtered by those two regions. So click on fiber tracking. You will see the tracks coming up here, keep seeding until there are, how many tracks we need here? Like 5,000 tracks. And you can see here that the seeding keep popping up up to several million. The reason is that the seeding could be located in the frontal lobe, temporal lobe, or other region It's not just related. So the tracks, well, the tracking would take a fairly long time. So one way to improve it is using a refined seeding. So on the left-hand side, you see here, we don't assign any seeding region. So by default, DSS Studio will seed the entire brain regions, which may not be an efficient way. I see a question, how do you decide the number of tracks? You see here, this is a 5,000. So usually what I see here, while the tracking is not efficient, then what I will assign a new seeding region by, first of all, stop the tracking. And using the track menu, there's a function called track to our eye. Look at it here um, under the track menu and track to our eye. Click on it. And you see there's a new region coming out from the track regions. And then I can assign this as a seed. So right now, instead of using whole brain seeding, which is not efficient, I uh, ask DSS Studio to seed only within this track regions. And of course here, let me change the name to track underscore MNI. And I can do it again. And you will see right now that it's much more efficient almost 10 times more efficient than the whole brain seeding. So a lot of time, the only reason we need to use seeding is just to improve tracking efficiency. Um, and then for selecting tracks, connecting to region using ROI. And here, I would like to is repeat the step in individual. So before I doing this, I will save the track region. So here, just to let you know, this one is from a template average from a thousand subjects. So this space is the MNI space, which is the template space. And I can save this track region as a nifty file that could be loaded into each subject's native space and DSS Studio will apply transformation. So to do that, first of all, I need to save this Nifty file. So that this one under the track region menu, save current region as track MNI, save it. So 
So once you save it, now let's re we could repeat this in each individual. So let's we can close it right now. Open the second file, which is the individual file. So you see here, there's a symbol like GQI.1.7. The GQI you construction will reconstruct this subject data in the native space. So this is subject's own space. And now we could repeat the same. So once you, when you click on the Atlas button, DSS Studio will perform uh, registration. If you have done it before, then it will take a long time. Until you finish, you pop up the Atlas dialog and you can do the same. So we can call in V1. It's here. Doing again V1, but on the right is here. And we can check if the result is okay. It seems to be at an okay location. And now the tracks files. So previously we saved like a track in the MNI space. If you want to load it here in the menu, there's a instead of open region, you can open an MNI region. So if you use this function and open a nifty file, DSS Studio will view this file as in the MNI space and apply transformation. So you see here, roughly align well with the subject. Then we can do the same. And of course, in the subjects travel tracking result, you will see this much noisier. Because it, due to the geometry or some of the fiber, maybe more deviated. You will see some of the tracks not, even though it's fulfilled all the criteria, but not the one we are going to look at. For example, this one should be the I4, inferior frontal occipital of a secular. It's just like coming from here to the right V1, but kind of uh, propagate over, over shooting to the left. So it seems fulfilled, but it's not what we wanted. So a way to eliminate those is that we can place an RA. So for example, I can say, I want to place an RA somewhere. A plan maybe here to eliminate those tracks. So click on the new region, switch it to our A, and draw it here. Let me make another color so we separate. And first we will talk about some modification to things that can dilate this region, so make it more robust. And then we can do it again. So this time we'll see how this region try to eliminate those. But as you can see here, it's not perfect because you, if you just draw on the plan, how about this one? So this one, this fiber is actually the part of the optic radiation, but just go deviate it to the location that we, we don't want it. So one trick here is instead of just placing this, um, manually draw an ROA, one common ROA I usually did is I can use those uh, track regions, make a copy, and I can create a limiting region. They say, okay, I only want uh, tracks to go to exist around certain voxels within those locations. So if, you, if the track has go more than certain voxels, I want to eliminate them. One way to do that is I can dilate this region. So let me show you how to create those things. Let me make a copy of this. So I make a copy of the tracks and dilate it. Some Arrow may coming 
flip over. So that's okay. Um, and then I use a function called the gate. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm creating a limiting region. So you see here, I limited the track within the large allowing range. So, and if the track that really go crazy outside this allowing range, it will be eliminated by this ROA. So I will just name it this ROA. So I dilate several times, already assigned the track location and inverted it and use it as an ROA. And then we can see how this goes. So still some may not be perfect, but almost much better because they, there's the fourth track going here is already been eliminated. So any idea why ROI is not showing up, make sure that you check here. So there's a way you need to check here or either this. So there are two check button you need to make sure this or either you have changed some of the setting within then you need to restore when doing settings then you will see those switching settings and right now the last question is how can i repeat this in common line and apply it to a lot of different subjects and i provided example here there are three different common line examples. One is just two ROI. So it's just assign the ROI. And here the ROI is coming from the others. So it could be applied to each individual subjects. This studio will handle the transformation. So HTBMNP is the others name. And L under, underscore V1 is the region name. I can assign two ROI. And now I can also assign the C region. And here, pay attention, I supply the MNI so that DSS Studio will know this is from the MNI the, uh, space and apply the situation. So I can give it a test. Copy this command. And then you go to the console. Make sure that the, your directory is correct. So right now I'm in the week two assignment, I can set the directory to week three. Make sure you have the right directory and to initiate this process. This as well would repeat the same doing and not just applying to one fit file, but all the fit file you can find here, including the template file, I put it in the same folder. So you will have 10 subjects, a thousand subjects, and is a still tied to all of that. And in the message chain, uh, you can see here, there's a message that say, track down to MI has MNI in the file name, it will be loaded as an MSP image. So make sure you have this one. If you don't have this one, this studio will think, oh, this uh, Nifty file may be from the native space and will not apply uh, spatial normalization. And the loaded location may be off. So here, the reason I named it as track underscore MNI is for this reason. And then the last step, remember I dilated the C region and then inverted it. The same step can also be repeated in command line. So I have an ROA region from the same track region followed by dilation six times and inverted it as an ROA. So you can give it a try. And it should be applying the same. And here, the wildcard symbol here will allow you to apply to all the fifth file, uh, either 10, 20, 100, or 1,000 subjects. So I see the question. So if you want to see, just a try to start the V1 left, right, but so suppose to see. You're right. Because if you start it in a gray matter, um, it's much harder to get correct tracks because you start it from um, a location where it's not, it's not good. Also, the second is uh, the error in fiber tracking will accumulate during the tracking process. So the best scenario is that you should start it in the middle 
So when the error accumulates to the end, it won't be that large error. But if you start it from one end and then keep propagating to another, usually the chance of getting more deviated track is much, much higher. You could experiment that I say, okay, instead of putting, assigning this as ROI, you use it as a seed, usually it gets much worse results and then it's not getting you what you wanted. Any questions here? Also in the panel, I've surprised some, uh, we call it region manual from different lab um, research group. They provide some example of how they use the ROI, ROA, or either N region or C regions um, to perform region-based fiber tracking. And also in the link here, if you click on the region-based fiber tracking link, it goes to a manual and I highly recommend it you to look at the tips. So for example, here I, I would say assign C region only if you want to speed up fiber tracking. So one common mistake uh, we made is that we, we use seeds as an ROI um, or vice versa. Uh, usually it doesn't really give the result you wanted. Um, and the only case I can think of, you want to assign seeding instead of using whole point tracking, you want to improve fiber tracking results. So just like the example we're showing here, V1 and V2, a lot of times we use whole, whole point fiber tracking, the tracking just wasted because maybe CD in the frontal. So using a seeding is main purpose to, to get better efficiency. So question, if I had to identify tracks, I need to set a balance call text, what would be the rational? Could you tell me see briefly so we can see a practical? Okay, if you want to connecting set a balance and the cortex. So see, if we can get anything. So one way I may, I may do it is I could bring up cerebellum, brain sec. So see what region we have here. So this cerebellum, cortical regions. Let's see if we can get um gray matter. So and set both to our eye and then see how it goes. Well, actually, it's catching a lot of right connections. Most of them is cortical point time, but some maybe just keep continuing. Um, I believe the track you looking at maybe like this here, this track. So when it goes to cerebellum, they maybe take a nuclei in the your brain stem. So you need to think about which Pass where you are want you want to map exactly because there could be cortical pontine track and the pontine track innervates the uh, nuclei in the brain stem and then transfer to cerebellum. So you may need to separate it in two different purpose tracking instance. Um, usually, we need to identify or target which pass where exactly. Um, cerebellum cortex there are a lot of different pathways. The second question, could you please show again how you convert track to an ROI? Okay, track menu, track to ROI. Let me see here. Or either you just right click here, there's a tracks to ROI. Next one. Can we use the template image used to create the MNI track in case? Yeah, sure. Um, template, there are, um, so for track, if I understand your person right, you, what you could look for is, there is an address called SCP-842. This one is actually created by me. So, and there are white meter track for example, this singulum. You could just use it here instead of we creating one from the address. So you say instead of I track get a single line and convert it to region, I could just call it up from SCP 
A42. But sometimes the track may be more def well defined, like the or more specific, like V1 to V2, then you need to create this mask by yourself. Otherwise, say, for example, we want to map like um, unsure fasciculus, you could just use this as a limiting region or seeding region. It will save you a lot of time. Next question, which region do you use as an RA when assigned the right and left? Okay, so let me repeat again how that doing. Um, it, it's called, I, I call it like a limiting region. Um, the way to, to do it is like, if allow me here, I can use unsafe fasciculus for example. So that's the location you show on the left bottom is the region of the unsafe fasciculus. And those limiting region is I, I want to limit the result within certain parameter around unsafe fasciculus. So the way to do it, First of all, I copy this region. So the original region is still there. And then I dilate it. Dilate using region, modify region, dilation. So the shortcut is control shift D or command shift D. So I can do it several times. And then invert it. So I can do it again. So I'll undo it. You can either using the menu here, dilating or shortcut, or even add the smoothing, make it more roundish, dilating, smoothing, and then invert it a bit. And undo all the things. So I'll keep answering your questions now. If you have any talk, feel free to ask me any question. Um, and if you all don't have questions, feel free to log off. So for the next question, can I come from one point? I said the oh, I was in was when was the oh, I register into this right? Default. Yes, so there's two ways you can tell DSS Studio to treat it like an in a nice space. Uh, one is the region menu, open MNI region, or in the command line, the file name has to have MNI in the file name. I missed a question on the top. Um, a bit of topic, but if the data set has been exported anonymized, would it prevent to correctly do a DT analysis to um, no, usually the anonymized routine would not modify essential data, but there could be case. For example, that some of the B table information stored on the DICOM header. If the tool that remove the DICOM header is not doing a good job, you may eliminate those important information and that could cause a problem. So, a way to check it is that you process the data with, without anonymize it and see if that worked out and then repeat it uh, after you anonymize it and then to examine whether it, uh, the process is the cause. Next question. Common that question, do the old parameter like C counts still works or can we only use Yes, the, the previous one still works. Yeah, you can still assign the same, um, but I still recommend using parameter ID. Um, that would be much better. I'm not sure if like if you use both, what would be the result? I need to do the code, re uh, code review into the program to check it. Um, Yeah, that's a good and that's a good point. So you can still use the old parameter without using parameter ID. May I ask a question about my data? Sure. Yeah, you feel free any question as long as it is the WI. And then if uh, if I can answer any kind of question. 
Let's class, you were talking about different way to do fiber tracking. How can we understand which method we should follow in our study? I would say you just choose the default methods. Um, the only time you need to consider the method is uh, the, the, the simple default methods not working. And then you could make a choice whether you want to have a different methods that, that you should go for the simple approach first unless necessary. That will be my personal recommendation. Where can we see the course recording? If you call, go to the course website. Um, the, the main page, I will provide a link here. So today's video, I would update the link under here. Next question, do you typically use 30 or, or 2000 for minimum? Yes, you are right. That's the default setting. But it also depends on the, the target track you are going to map. Um, but for most of the cases, it should be good. Yep, sure, you can feel free to share your screen. Um, let me see if I can allow you to share your screen here. You can give it a try. Uh, I will jump to the next question, but you can feel free to share anytime. If the detailed precision is an isometric, can I still be used to this? It would be much challenging, but there is a step in the deconstruction. Um, if I can find a file here, there is a function that allows you to make it isotropic before proceeding. Say so if I can find one as an example. Um, so this one is like, open the SRC file, which is under step T2. If you have a non-isotropic acquisition, then you could resample or regreading it. So resample to isotropic, this will be helpful to make it isotropic, but you need a value that between your lowest resolution, highest resolution. For example, if you have one millimeter implant, but two millimeter slice thickness, probably something in between, that would be good. If you have data that you would like to share screen, feel free to do so right now. Hi, uh, I believe I share, I'm sharing my screen. Okay, let me check your setting. It seems to me there is, is the core white matter seems to be good. Um, but as it reaches the core outer part, it seems to there be a bias. If you have SRC file that you can send to me, then I can sure. check. It could be the signal problem. I didn't see a problem with your parameter setting. I mean the um, problem with the acquisition of the data or? It's the... likely, but I'm not 100% sure. It, it could be likely to be the problem with the acquisition, but I need to check your SLC file. I will send it, sure. Nice. You can upload it in the DSS Studio website. So we go to DSS Studio website, there is a data uploading. And I can do it right now. If you, just so unloaded there. Sure. <laughs> Can you previously review how to remove spurious track? Um, sure. Say for example, we let me repeat the same here. We bring in V one. Oh. I forgot to share my screen, sorry. Say for example, we here, we put in V1, and left, V1 on the right, and make it our I. Let's set the store checking setting. 
So one way we could do it is to create a limiting region that's be easier using the RA to eliminate those tracks. So one way I demonstrated is that you can use this and then check to our eye. But before doing this one, you need to make a correct track here. So that's why we could use the manual segmentation. So I can, what I can, what I can do is I in this, oh wait. Um, I can do it here. In, if you want to do it in the subject space, I can just manually set that the one that looks ideal and then create a, a track mask. Or the example I show you here is I use the template. Use a template usually is much easier because a template just show you correct track. But if you use the subject space, and you get the those spurious tracks. Here. So the way I did is I loaded using open MNI region and open the track MNI. So this one I created from the template. And I'm not only using it as a seed, but I also make a copy of it and then creating a limiting RA. So it's a dilating. You could do it as a modify region dilation, or I just use a shortcut. So it's creating a dilating region, or either smooth it a bit, dilate, smooth a bit, and then invert it. So here, if we try the inversion, see if it is okay. Some may be not good and you need to do it again. Let me try to do, do it. It's here, make a copy. Let me cancel this, use different color. So I can see whether it's okay. I dilate, smooth, dilate, smooth, and invert it. Uh, turn on all the regions. This one is RA. So the RA here is a limiting region. Any tracks that go out of boundary will just be eliminated. And then the green is the seeding to improve efficiency. And then there are two RI. Then here, tap tap the tracking to get a result. Okay, next questions. I would, okay, I will check the upload data. Let me jump to the next question first for specific problem in data second. Yes, you are right. You can upload it and I will get it right now. How did you invert it? So invert it using modify region here. How can we do for automatic fiber tracking and get photometry value? So the way we do it here, let me look. Automatic fiber tracking. So say for example, our grid fasciculus. First of all, you get the track. Then once the track king is done, go to the tracks menu and click on statistics. So that's the step we get photometry. And I can, so here you can see the tracks, number of tracks, and then and the source of the value and shape matrices. Can I share some of our data from Corny? I see some normal track. Yeah, sure. Let me allow you to share screen. For those of you who can upload data, I would check if your data arrive and then I would I would show the locally here. Um, this is the data. 
So I see those yes. tracks here. Um, oh, I see. There's a lesion. Okay. So should I uh, remove those or create a mask? I don't think there's false tracks because you have a lesion. Um, it thinks there is a lesion around the temporal. May not be false tracks. And there are also some um, short. I see. Well, it depends on the purpose of what you want to get here. Um, if you want to map around the legion tracks, then it, it's really hard to tell where the track is false, just by looking at the whole brain. Mm -hmm. Um, the way you say you 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 can say um you can identify each individual bundle, and then review whether it is false or is correct. For example, for the, the this legion location, it may involve right outer fasciculars, right inferior longitudinal fasciculars, right, right side I4, or even Anxinet. So the one, one way you could do is that you can use auto track to map those around the region pathway and see if we get you some correct results. If not, then you can do a manual segmentation to see if that, that's the track you wanted. Okay, thank you. Next question. Although we can use 2LI to identify connecting, why we use seed um, unterminative? Let's... Well, you could experiment, but usually place seeding on the cortex is not ideal. Uh, and terminative region, yes, you can do it, but the purpose is like uh, tracking will stop when it reaches the termination, the, the border of the terminative region. Next question. Where is the MNI file you loaded? It's created. Um, from the fifth file. So what I did is I, I did a tracking here and then save it. So I did a V1 to V2 tracking here. Remember I got a, a C shape of the Copus callosum and I save it as a track.mni. So I created it in the example. Okay, here you, you have a B table problem. Your B table is flipped. So you need to turn on auto uh, check B table, then hopefully that could be right. I see I see that you didn't turn on check B table here, but it seems that, let me see if you turn on check B table. No, you didn't turn on check B table. So you could go to step T2. If you go to step T2 and then check B table, see if that helps. And here, the, the presentation of the track, obviously the B table seems to have a problem. Sorry, I can hear you. Um, if you have SRC file, that you can upload it to me and then I can I can show you how to do it. Uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, my, my audio was off. Okay, so you think it's the problem in the B table? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think it's related? Because I only got the out the data set anonymized. So I think the header, uh, the top header of the file might have been some information might be, be might have been erased that well, could be the case um so if you have if you can send me the src file yeah. then i could probably help checking it sure um, sure but that's what my we... first impression is that it's a beatable problem okay thank you very much 
No problem. You can, if you upload the data, then I can check. Um, okay, I will see if I can receive the unloaded data. It's a minute. So I, okay, I received the data from Yasaman Bioki. Would you comment on what the problem you, you're facing here? Yes. Yes, um, this is me. I upload the data. Let me open it instead of T2 and share my screen. Okay, okay, I see. Oh, I see. Hmm. So the way we could check the, this will also do it next week, but we can do it right now. Let's see the contrast here. There are 60 DWI. So this one is B0. It seems that the B value is too low to give enough contrast change. So the fiber over here, you need a higher B value. You see that the contrast doesn't change, even though there are different orientation being different. The only thing that changed a lot is here in the core white matter. That's why I say that a lot of time the core white matter usually will get good results. Um, So let me try um, the default setting. If you use GQI 0 0.6, let me see if I can reduce it to 0 0.2 and see how that goes. It's much better, but not yet perfect. So if I use lower this parameter, it's due to the lower B value setting. So lower the B value seems to get you better results, as you can see here. Um, I mean that lower the parameter used here. So this parameter, uh, the optimal setting depends on the B value you use. Apparently 0.6 is still too high. In human, we usually use 1.2, but I try 0.2 and it thinks that the reason is that the B value is very low. So if you have a chance to change the acquisition, you may consider increase the B value to a thousand or more. Or even with this modification, it seems okay. And also another point here is for animal studies, usually here the orientation we need to 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 flip into the SEO direction. So right now we are looking at the different orientation, the ideal orientation in DSI Studio. So if you, I guess this one is a is this a mouse or rat? It's, it's a macaque. Rat? It's macaque data. Oh, it's a macaque data. Okay, yes. so if you look at the uh, in the resource packet template, we need that slice in this orientation. So DSS Studio can apply at this function. And you have a different scanning orientation, but that's fine. The way to do it is you click here. There's a slips, I think it's a YZ. And then flip it Y. So that this is the orientation we want to look at. 
how we create fiber tracking results. See if I can open it here. Yeah, and that's the orientation that we could use um, Jesus Atlas, see if it works. It take a while, let me see if all the can goes in. Yep, you can see all the regions coming in, even though the resolution is not perfect, but seems to be okay. Any question with this one? I think that data set quality is okay. Um, if a change get a higher B value, otherwise you could still get the fiber tracking going and with all the others working for you. Thank you. But um, I think uh, thinking that um, the fiber are um, in parallel direction, isn't it something uh, especially yeah in that part oh okay this could be uh, you see it's on the surface right yes the deep white matter is still okay so there could be any current problem maybe yeah they, or either there's just an enough contrast some if not enough contrast they also would give this oh, some of the buyers may be enhanced. So higher P value may, may just eliminate nodes. Or either you could just use a higher threshold. Um, this one is more of an acquisition problem. So you see that there's those fiber, all of them is force fiber deviating in this direction. So ideally it should be, if we look at the sample monkey data, It should be do like this. So it's like likely to be the acquisition problem. Okay, thank you. So by increasing the B value, yes, ideally it, there could be the solution. Uh, mm -hmm. another possible cause may be the eddy current, but I didn't see much of the eddy current. So if I look at the, the one you sent me, usually eddy current. Let me move it to the orientation familiar with oh there's a current a little bit you see that the brain is like shaking a little some in some orientation so if you search, let me see if i can do a current correction and remove it so there's a correction eddy by the way to show the b value it have just go to the first tab clear here to show raw data but data is under the step T2 once you open the SRC file and going first here. And right now I'm doing the AD correction, see if we can correct those AD current moving of the brain to remove false fiber in the surface. This may take a while, but hopefully we we'll get it done in one or two minutes. Any other questions? While well, we're still waiting for the eddy to complete. Okay, so once this is done, let me see if it handles better. Yeah, you see that it's not like moving a lot. But there's a little bit distortion. You see that the brain size make it smaller than help a vessel a bit. This may also cause a problem. Um, and that's because uh, you see here there's some bright voxels. This code is accessibility. This may be like you do the accessibility. So what you would need is another B, is a B0 and 
acquire at different phase encoding direction. So we could run top up. So you see the correction here. Instead of just eddy, there's a top button eddy. To use this top button eddy, you need an extra acquisition with different phase encoding direction. We will talk about this next week, but you can explore those materials. So this is also an acquisition problem. But after this correction, let me see if this get better result, point two, we have a file. Yeah, I still have this false fiber you see here. That's because the brand size shrink it more. That's due to accessibility when you correct the AD. Some interaction between AD and AD current and phase distortion go side by side. So it's still not able to remove those. Yeah, it's still there. So either increase the B value. So when you increase the B value, those may also be reduced quite a lot. Second is you need uh, another B0 with different opposite phase encoding direction to handle this susceptibility artifact so that the AD correction can also remove apply here to eliminate those. Or oh, another way is that you just make a smaller brand, try to eliminate. So the, the mask here, you can, Erode it, but you also lose a lot of in the back. Yeah, there may be no perfect solution because I hear the uh, location with the artifact. Um, I'm not very well familiar uh, with the part uh, with this uh, T two uh, reconstructions parameters, but uh, then uh, I. In the advanced setting, I select, uh, I think, ODF and check the B value. It gives me a better result. I mean, when I, I don't know what, I mean, when I check all of these things, it gives me a better result. Is it something that uh, You mentioned what step you do to get better result. You check output ODF? Yes. And also check B table, no high for, no, I mean, I selected all of these parameters oh, and it gave me a better result. And I don't know how did it help. It matter that much. I can give it a try, but it should just give almost the same results because it's just output additional information. Yeah, the false fiber is still there. You see here, the false fiber is still here. It doesn't really matter whether you have ODF or not. Yeah, you see, you see it's here. I, I, I would say the same. Yeah, even worse. But... Yeah. So next question, I have an implant solution 1.5, so it's a three, it's similar to two, maybe. You, you can also try 1.5, but um, I'm, I'm not sure if that it gives a good result. You could just give it a try. Um, because also depending on your SNR and all the conditions altogether. Any question here? I probably um, am not and probably end today. And then thank you for your participation. If you have questions and if you also feel free to email me in case you come up with some question later. So thank you very much for participation.